So this is a Taonan School Practice Paper 1. The link to this paper will be in the description and uh, as well as the timestamps for you to fast forward wherever you want to. Uh, anyway, for today's paper, good news is every section here is actually easy. So if it's level 2, I will indicate with 2 stars in the timestamps. So without further ado, let's begin. And here we go, the grammar MCQ, Sally, singular, blank her aunt's wedding this Saturday. So because we are dealing with the future tense, uh, ED, okay, past tense, no, would in the past tense, no. So what is in the future tense here? That would be number 3, will be attending. Question 2, Jamie is the best athlete amongst all of us. There is blank doubt. Well. First of all, doubt is uncomfortable. So, and also having doubt means you are unsure. Well, there is no doubt over here. There is little doubt over here that she will be chosen. In other words, if you have doubts, you are unsure. If you have little doubt, that's the opposite. You are very sure. So if there are rain clouds in the sky, you can say I have little doubt that it will rain that means you're very sure it will rain okay so prestigious sports competition well prestigious means bringing about the very best okay so are there going to be weak runners in this competition no just the best competing against the best question three officers from the nea well i know for sure officers is plural okay next uh blank the neighborhood misspelled over here to check for mosquito breeding since last week. Okay, so it's still going on, just that it started since last week. Okay, so we're gonna basically cancel these two out. So it's either has been patrolling or have been patrolling. Well, because put officers is plural, has is wrong, has is for singular subjects. Well, have is the answer, number four. Question 4 sounds like a truth statement, so we are definitely using the present tense. I'm going to take away number 2, right? Are we reducing? reducing? No. Okay. So, next, is it singular or plural? Using handkerchief instead of napkins. So, using is singular, that is what we call a gerund, right? And because gerunds are singular, the answer is number 3. It reduces the amount of waste that is thrown away. Question 5. Do you like the story blank by the local author? So the story is already written. Yeah, so it's number 3. Written by the local author. Question 6. The scouts helped the old woman. So helped is a verb. The old woman helped who? The old woman, the object. And then we got a verb again. See, clean, it's a verb, isn't it? So the rule here says that uh, the first verb, object, followed by the verb. The second verb, it's either the root, that means no S, no ING, no ED added to it, or, okay, either the root or the ing. So in this case, there isn't an ing, the answer is number one, the root form. The old scouts, the, <laughs> the scouts help the old woman clean her house during their job week. A common mistake, helped is in the past tense. Most students would choose number three, clean. That would be wrong. Number seven, while rushing to the office, Mr. Lim blank to switch off the lights at home. While rushing, Mr. Lim all right, that's number one, forgot to switch off the lights. Number eight, all the clothing. Well, all the clothing, I know all is plural, but when you're dealing with uncountable nouns, clothing, it's singular. Well, because it's singular, right, number two, number four are instantly out because those are plural, isn't it? Um, not for sale, but will be. Well, that's future, yes, but will be sent. So we're not dealing in the past tense. So we should use the present tense. That's number one, is. Question 9. Professor Wong, okay, we are dealing with a human, so who, whose book, right? And the book belonged, belongs to Professor Wong, so whose book won the Nobel Prize. It's a renowned scientist. Now, in case you don't know, renowned means world famous or very, very famous. So, yeah, number 10. Matthew is interested, okay, so this is basically a preposition, interested in painting. Fairly easy. Number 11, vocabulary. Look at the blank designs on this antique pot, teapot. I wonder how long it took to complete the many small complicated parts. So the design had many small complicated parts. The word to use here is intricate, okay? Containing many small parts, just like the inside of a watch or this design that contains many small parts, very intricately designed. If you look at uh, a beehive, that's also the case. 
Question 12. The biggest blank in our way was a fallen tree on the road. Well, fallen tree on the road, that is obviously something that blocks your way, so it's an obstacle. 13. I was cleaning my room when I blank my mother's old school uniform. So, uh, found, right? So, it came across, my by accident, came across the mother's old school uniform. Question 14. Thomas checked and rechecked his composition. Well, he's very careful with small details, so the word that is applicable here is number four, meticulously. Meticulously means to be very careful with small details, yeah? Like this picture of a man snipping off, <laughs> trimming his uh, lawn with a pair of scissors, one blade of grass at a time, requiring a lot of attention to detail. Now, if you're a chef and you put your sauce on the plate like this, okay, making sure that the size of the drops go from large to small, that's a lot of attention and yeah, on detail, isn't it? Attention to detail. So that's being very meticulous as well. Question 15. The athlete felt that losing to a younger player was blank. It was very unpleasant, but he had to accept the defeat. So a bitter pill to swallow, something, a reality that is very difficult to accept. Guilty of corruption, a man was brought before a wise old judge. After much contemplation, after much consideration, thinking, right, the judge said, you may choose your punishment. Whoa, so it's decided that this man is definitely guilty. And now just choose your punishment. First of all, contemplation, which one is it? Uh, contemplation refers to consideration. Right? So if you contemplate the meaning of life, what does that mean? You are thinking very deeply about the meaning of life. Okay, the first punishment is to pay a fine of $100,000. Whoa. The second punishment is to accept 100 lashes, uh, basically canings across your back. So financial pain, physical pain. The third punishment is to eat 10 kilograms of onions. What? <laughs> okay, this is the strangest of the three, isn't it? Next, without a second thought, so immediately, without hesitation, yeah? Oh, that's number four, immediately. The convict decided on the third option. However, barely had he finished one kilogram of onions when he felt his throat constricting. So, barely means without even finishing, being close to finishing it, right? Scarcely had he finished one kg, then he, uh, his throat started constricting. Now, what's constricting here? It means to tighten. To constrict is to tighten. Now, look at this picture over here. It's a boa constrictor, a kind of snake that kills not by venom. It doesn't kill using venom with a bite, right? Uh, it kills by squeezing, wrapping its body tightly around the prey and squeezing and crushing the bones. So it's a constrictor. It tightens around its prey instead of killing by a venomous bite. Next, quickly, he begged the judge to allow him to take on the second punishment instead, the physical pain. The judge agreed. After the 10th stroke, whoa, how many strokes were there again? Right, a uh, hundred, my goodness, okay, just 10. The man could no longer bear the pain. Please spare me the lashing, I will pay the fine, he cried, regretting his rash decision. The judge smiled and granted him his wish. So he, oh my goodness, <laughs> well, he unfortunately had a taste of all three punishments, didn't he, right? Uh, one kg of onions and uh, 10 lashes of the cane and had to pay the full fine. Okay, rash decision. What's that? Okay, impulsivity. So if you go shopping and you, you say that, okay, this uh, pair of shoes was an impulse buy. Suppose you spent like $300 on a pair of shoes because it's branded or it has the name of your favorite singer on it, right? Uh, then later you say, oh no, that was an impulse buy. What does that mean? You bought it without much consideration, without much thinking. And yeah, it was rash. It was not done with consideration. And here we have visual text, the title being The Earth is Seriously Sick. Um, all right, is it, does it have a flu or something? Obviously not, right? Uh, this is, I guess, to do with human pollution. Okay, let's take a look. The ocean, large sections of the ocean are overfished. Well, this is not about pollution. This is more about uh, depletion of resources. In this case, fish. Additionally, each year about 20 to 40 million tons of sea life are caught and thrown back into the ocean. 
usually wounded or dead. Why? They are caught along with target fish but are not wanted. So they are saying that a lot of fish are caught in the nets that did not um, that are caught by accident because nets just catch everything, right? Next. If this continues, okay, what is the this referring to? Uh, basically, catching large amounts of fish that's not targeted. What will it mean for people who depend on the sea as a major source of their food? Yeah, okay. Overfishing. Next, deforestation. The cutting down of trees, okay, hopefully you know by now, that's what deforestation means, results in the reduction in the Earth's capacity to absorb carbon dioxide. So trees in the day, they absorb CO2, carbon dioxide. So when lots of trees are cut down, well, you have more of the waste gas here, right? Or well, waste gas for us. <laughs> and this is said to be a cause of global warming. Is said to be. Confirmed? We don't know. Said to be. Some species of plants which are used for life-saving medicine will soon vanish. Okay, so uh, disadvantage number one uh, is we are less able to accept CO2, all right, and as a result, increase global warming. Uh, problem number two, some species of plants that provide medicine for us will disappear. Nevertheless, the forest destruction continues. In fact, the rate of destruction has increased in recent years. So it's not just happening, it's happening faster and faster. That's what it means rate. That's what rate means. Yeah, if you're growing 1 cm taller every year, right, you're growing. But let's say the rate is increasing. That means it goes like this. Plus 1, plus 3, plus 5, plus 10. Okay? So yeah, you're increasing, but you're also increasing faster and faster. If nothing is done about it, okay, what's the it referring to? Well, usually you read before that. What is it referring to? If nothing is done about what? Destruction of forests. Tropical forests could disappear in about 20 years time so tropical forests are forests where you that don't experience the four seasons yeah they are near the equator next littering so we how many problems we have three of them here you notice what's the purpose of this first half is to give the reader background information on what exactly are causing the earth to be sick littering on both on land and sea is a very grave problem a very serious problem if the waste is toxic it can cause sickness or death in humans and animals okay short and sweet there there are many more not just these three threats to our environment can the earth be saved or is it the battle or is the battle already lost what can you do to save the dying planet so we have a question here we have a question here basically encouraging the reader the reader to think deeply about okay the problem here support okay so now asking you to take action right save support the save the earth week event from this date to this date by the way first to fifth how many days is this activity if you take five minus one and you say the answer is four that's incorrect okay it goes like this that's the event is is it happening on the first yeah absolutely so the first, yeah, sure. One, two, three, four, five. What do you know? It's not five minus one, it's five days. Okay, initiated by the Nature Club members. Hang on, initiated, what does that mean? Uh, started by, started by the Nature Club members. So make sure you know the word initiated. This one week event, well, not exactly, it's five days. Okay, has a host of exciting activities lined up just for you. Has a host, a, a lot, numerous. Next, My Earth, My Home poster design competition. Okay, so poster design, paint or draw how you can save the environment. Winning entries will be displayed at the exhibition booth. So have a chance at, um, of showing off your, at showing off your work. Trophies and attractive prizes will be given away to the top five entries. So, okay, no mention of what the prizes are though. <laughs> that's weird you call it attractive but you don't mention what's attractive over here mm, weird e email the art the art teacher in charge mrs amy chia at amy chia at artworks.com.org for more details okay costume parade for p1 to 3 students or oh, younger students here dress up as a fairy tale character using recycled materials old clothing newspapers or magazines each class representative will get to dress up and showcase his or her upcycled upcycled outfit all participants will receive a book voucher 
learn about animals that are on the verge of extinction, okay, near extinction at the exhibition. Booth, assembly talk for P4 to 6 students, so the older ones, doing something much more serious. Uh, this sounds more like a, a beauty pageant, isn't it? Right, just <laughs> creating costumes out of recycled materials. All right, so the older ones get to listen to an invited guest from the environmental agency. All right, so activities. From trash to treasures. Uh, what? Really? Are these treasures? Let's see. Donate used milk cartons. That's trash. Tissue boxes, old newspapers, magazines, and empty drink cans. Drop them into the recycle bins behind the canteen. Remember to wash and dry the milk cartons and drink cans. Obviously, you don't want to throw in cartons that still have milk on it or you know drink cans that still have your sweet drink in, in it yeah all recyclables collected will be used as materials for the art workshops oh i see okay so the participants have to bring the materials and those materials will be used for art workshops is that really treasures i don't know <laughs> I don't think these people know what treasure means. Okay, anyway, here's a quick glance at the week's activity. So first, all the way to the fifth, Monday to Friday, learn to make a musical instrument at the art room during recess, limited to 20 places. I guess, make a musical instrument. Maybe that's using one of the recyclables there. So maybe the musical instrument here is the treasure, perhaps. Poster design competition at the library, costume parade, assembly talk, Learn how to make a robot at the art room during recess, limited to 20 as well. So probably using the recyclable materials as well. So a picture of a robot to help you visualize what the workshop will be like for on Friday. Next, pledge to change your habits. Well, make a promise to change your habits. So I guess this one is the more serious and more helpful and productive part. A little change in your daily habits makes a huge difference towards environmental conservation. Saving. Conservation means saving. All right. Complete the tasks on the pledge card by 5th of July and you will receive a limited edition bookmark from your form teacher. So write your name down, your class, okay, and indicate whether you have completed the tasks here. Uh, pack my snacks. Okay, sure. Recyclable container. All right. Turn off the lights. Sure. This is quite basic. Share my food with someone as the portion if, if it's too large. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure about this. Next one. Use water wisely. No details. Okay. All right. Well, one of the things that you can do, uh, general knowledge, is take away food less. Because every time you take away food, instead of using the plate, you're using more materials for packing. Next, to find out more tips on how you can be more environmentally friendly, so that is going to include more than just this list, visit this website. Okay, on to the questions. 21. Many questions are asked on page 5 to... What's that? What's the, what's, what's, where's the page 5 many questions? Look here. Uh, can the earth be saved or is the battle already lost? What can you do to save the dying planet? Uh, what will it mean for people who depend on the sea? as a major source of food. Now, what's with all these questions? Okay, it is communicating the reader, isn't it? It's to urge the readers to take positive steps to save the planet, okay? All referring to saving the planet, not about just fish, okay? Next, what does it in B for under the header refer to? Well, it refers to the cutting down of trees. If you look at the text here, all right, so uh, forest destruction continues. The rate also has increased. If nothing is done about it, it's about the destruction of forests or deforestation happening quicker and quicker. The answer is number four, cutting down of trees. Ah, okay, Save the Earth Week was started by, well, initiated by tells you that it's the Nature Club. Jane wants to take part in the poster design competition. So focus your attention on poster design competition. She can blank to get more details. Oh, let's email Mrs. Amy Chia, right? Now, if the, yeah, so focus on poster design and then Amy Chia over here. I don't know if some school, some school questions would write Mr. Amy Chia or Miss Amy Chia just to trip up students. 
So be very meticulous, careful with, with small details. Make sure it misses. And make sure it is misses over here. Definitely, number one. Besides completing the tasks on the pledge card, so on top of doing all those tasks, the students can also blank to show that they are truly committed to saving the earth. Now, attend the assembly talk. Are you showing that you're truly committed? Not really, you're just listening to the speaker. Participate in a poster design. Now, is that sh like a serious action that you are going to take? No. Gather more info. Again, there's only one concrete action over here. Donate items that can be recycled. That's it. Number two. There will be a costume parade for, well, P1 to P3, isn't it? So that's lower primary students. The materials will be contributed by the students. That's number two. How do we know? Because everything here, the recyclers collected will be used as materials for the art workshops. So here we are talking to the reader to donate, drop them, and those things will be used as materials. So it is basically contributed, not bought from a shop or something. Next, which one is true? Well, all the activities are hands-on. Wait, hang on. All? The assembly talk is not hands-on. You're not really doing something. You're sitting down and listening. Next, the art activities encourage mass student participation. Well, the keyword here is mass. That's not true because if you look at the uh, art activities, they are limited to 20. Okay, the one making the robot as well as the musical instrument one. Yeah, limited to 20, make a robot, limited to 20. So it's not mass student participation. Nope, number two is wrong. The Nature Club will give a talk on the 4th of July. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, talk, 4th of July. Hang on, 4th of July talk. Let's take a look. Assembly talk. Uh, hang on, Nature Club? No, invited guest from the environmental agency. So that is definitely wrong, number three. Number four is correct. Participants will receive a prize each. Yeah, all participants will receive it. So that's number four. And here we are at close passage. Uh, let's see. Yip Ping Siu, a three-time Paralympic medalist. Uh, what medal? We don't know. Was awarded a National Day Award in 2008. She was recognized, blank her contributions, right? She was recognized for her contributions. So recognized for, this is how you decide, okay? Next, in promoting an awareness for disabled athletes in Singapore. Okay, so Paralympic uh, as opposed to Olympic, right? So this is a sports event for people with um, uh, disabilities, right? So in this case, this athlete is missing a leg, but there is something there. We call it a prosthetic. So that can help uh, the athlete run. Next. Yi Ping Siu was born healthy. So now a little bit of background on her life story. Unfortunately, her muscles started to deteriorate. Now that is a very good word to know at your level. To deteriorate actually means to get worse, right? To get worse. Let's take a look here. So her muscles started to deter deteriorate at an early age. Soon she blank not move her legs. Well, we are dealing with the past tense, so she could not move her legs. She was later diagnosed with muscular dystrophy. Despite her disability, Yi Ping Siu did not give up any hope. So even though she was disabled, she did not give up hope. Blank, she was five years old, she started swimming. So when she was five years old, she started swimming to strengthen her muscles. Makes sense because her muscles were weakening, getting worse. Yeah? In fact, her muscles were wearing away. Yeah? Next. She felt totally free and enjoyed every moment in the water. I guess being in the water, it's quite weightless, so it's much easier to move about compared to on land, right? So that's why she felt totally free. In secondary school, Yip Ping Siu began swimming competitively and was mentored, was trained by an experienced coach. So make sure experience has starts with a vowel, so you use N for the article. 
rain or shine, she would train twice a day, possibly in an indoor pool, uh, and work out in the fitness room at the swimming complex. As a result, she won many competitions. So, uh, trained very often and worked very hard. Yi Ping Xiu's perseverance, blank optimism. Well, these are two positive things, right? So, we join them together with and have inspired many youths to believe in themselves. So youths, plural, in themselves. They learn not to be easily deterred, discouraged by any challenges but to overcome them. Yi Ping Xiu is truly a great inspiration to all of us. So a Paralympian held up as a role model. Well, well, spelling editing, 12 marks. So let's begin. Many schools are getting their students to fall in love with gardening. So that's that's a topic sentence that tells us what the entire text is about. Okay, students trying their hands at gardening in school. The teachers believe that such outdoor experience wait, hang on, experimental learning. Oh no, 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 no. The word we are looking for is experiential learning, not T-A-L, is T-I-A-L. Well, experience, experiential learning comes from the word experience. Basically, it means learning something through going through it, by going through it. Now, what can you do to learn farming? Can you watch a YouTube video? Sure. You can read a book? Yeah, sure. But what's the best way to learn it? Is to use your hands and actually go about doing it. That is experiential learning. All right, so experiential learning brings, okay, so learning, this kind of learning is singular, right? So brings with S, closer to nature and also cultivates with S as well. So experiential learning brings them closer to nature and cultivates an interest in science too. So learning as a gerund is singular, so brings with S and cultivates with S. Having beautiful gardens, students get to, wait, hang on, you see the infinitive, to over here, so to learn, yeah, no, nothing added to it, ing, s, or ed, nope. Okay, get to learn about plants which attract butterflies, they also learn about the life cycles of those, okay, insects as they watch, hang on, we're talking about these insects, referring to the butterflies. As they watch the caterpillars transform into butterflies, they will be amazed when they see them emerging from the pupa. So that's a spelling error right there. It's just one, one M emerging, coming out from the pupa. Some schools even sow seeds. They even plant seeds in the ground for vegetables. Okay, please don't say veggie tables. <laughs> yeah, it's vegetables. And in this case, single T. And grow herbs in the eco in the eco gardens or hydroponic gardens. Eco ambassadors, so people who represent okay the environment or something, are always pulling out okay pulling out the weeds, and watering the plants. Oh, spelling mistake. And this, it's a very common word, enthusiastically. Enthusiastically, so they do it with lots of energy, then they are very willing to do it. They even share the harvest, okay, so the, the eco-ambassadors, they share the harvest okay, with the community and their schoolmates. Hang on, what, what harvest are we talking about? The vegetables and the herbs. Next, uh, through this program, several, spelling mistake there, several schools are pleased that their students, hang on, students is plural, isn't it? So it shouldn't be a has, right? It should be have developed a greater sense of responsibility and realize how their actions can directly or indirectly affect okay, the environments. Therefore, thus, they are convinced of the need for conservation. Another piece about the environment. Hmm. And now, close passage, 15 marks. Uh, usually challenging for most students. In this case, I find that this is easy. So let's see if you agree with me. Robots are machines that can be programmed and reprogrammed. What does that mean? You can give it instructions. You can also change the instructions to perform specific tasks. Valuable information can be obtained blank various sensors. It can be obtained from various sensors that are attached to them. So how do robots see? Do they have eyes? No. They probably have uh, either uh, okay, sensors that can detect the distance to objects 
okay, or cameras and all that. Next, various sensors that are attached to them. Okay, with the information collected, robots are then able to process it, the information, to determine the next course of action. So course of action is a very common phrase, course of action. So in, it's a fancy way of saying the robots will then decide what to do. So if the if a if a if a robot okay sends out some kind of signal and detect there's a detect that there's a there's an obstacle in front of it, a wall or something. So the waves bounce back and hit the robot, and maybe the robot will just say, Hey, stop going this this way, now change your direction to avoid running into the wall. Next. Many people define robots as an imitation of human beings okay so some people say that oh what's a robot it's something a machine that looks like a human being okay is that a good <laughs> definition a good meaning for robots not really but robots do not necessarily have to blank us at all times okay imitation is the clue word over here okay they do not have to look like us they do not have to resemble us at all times uh, some of you might have the robot vacuum cleaner right does it look like a human? Not really. Robots come in different blank and sizes. That is a very obvious phrase. Shapes and sizes. And are built according to what they are meant to do. Robots were invented to perform one blank more. One or more tasks with great accuracy, precision and speed. As humans, we lack these qualities. We are not able to go so fast. Because over time, we get exhausted and slow down. Unlike machines, there is no way we can work round the, okay, round the clock, 24 hours. We need to sleep, we need to rest, we need to have fun, we need to relax. Robots are also often needed to perform tedious or complex tasks in hostile environments. So, uh, a work that is boring, that is, re that is repeated, okay? and in places that are not very friendly okay so maybe the environment is too hot okay collecting you know soil from a volcano or something right that might prove to be too dangerous for humans some examples include the military soldiers right okay where robots are used for bomb disposal so isn't that great if there's a terrorist planting a bomb get a robot to remove the bomb instead of a human being right uh, robots are used so that blank human is put at risk, so that no human is put at risk. In blank, comma, robots operate alongside surgeons. Hey, hang on, surgeons, what does that tell you? In what kind of area do we find surgeons? In hospitals. At home, robots are not only used for lawn mowing and home surveillance, but also for vacuuming. Now, how do I know but is the answer here? because of this phrase here. Not only is it used for this, but also for this. Okay, surveillance. Well, you have cameras that show, okay, whether the baby is safe or not, for example. Robots are blank a big, bigger role in our lives today. Well, they are playing a bigger role in our lives today compared to the past. Okay, blank adult without adult. Isn't that the second time in this paper with the word doubt? So without a doubt, it's a, it's, it's a fancy way of saying what? Surely, surely, without a doubt, we are relying heavily on them in many ways. However, by having the different types of robots to meet the needs of various industries, will we be at risk of being replaced by robots in the future? So this is another way of saying when more and more robots start to do more and more work, in diff do many different kinds of work, Will you need human workers anymore in the future? Not just in the future, in the near future. So for human beings now delivering food, in the near future, can robots do that job? Probably. They can do it any time of the day. Rain or shine. All right, synthesis. First question being a level two, let's see. The children enjoyed the field trip to the science center. Now, the children found, what did they find? <laughs> they found what, right? Did they find a treasure or something? No, uh, it's basically describing a feeling, right? They found the field trip to the science center enjoyable. So this is what we call a word change question. So from enjoy to enjoyable. 
they found it enjoyable. Direct to indirect speech. Okay, look at this. This is a past word in the past tense, isn't it? You have to add a head. Now, after you add a head, what must you do? Change this to the past, past participle. Okay, the past participle. Next, Susan asked me if I, okay, past tense, so make sure you add a head. After that, use the past participle of draw. Okay, if I had drawn, can you use the word this? Nope, you have to change it to that. That's it. Mark did not pay his aunt a visit. Mark was overseas. Okay, now if Mark was not overseas, he would have paid his aunt a visit. So he only could not do it because he was overseas. But if he was not overseas, he would have paid his aunt a visit. All right. Singular or plural subjects and verbs, right? Take a look. What do I mean by that? Um, let's see. All is plural. Why? Because we are dealing with countable nouns. Students. So if it's plural, your verb will be sing your verb will be plural as well. Were. And notice that this is in the past tense. So keep your answer written in the past tense. However, there is a giant difference now. Instead of all the students, we are talking about every. All the students is plural, but every is singular. So can we say every students? No, it's every student. Next, notice I'm keeping things in the past tense, except we are now using was, which is singular. Why? Because every student is singular. We have to use was. All the students is plural. We have to use were. Every student was given a notebook at the end of the visit to the museum. Make sure that you are very meticulous and careful. Don't misspell any words. Okay. Number 70. The guard saw the prisoner trying to escape. He raised the alarm at once. So, he raised it at once. So, as soon as the guard saw the prisoner trying to escape, comma, he raised the alarm. And now, comprehension. Good news, I find it to be quite an easy one. So, when I was eight, yeah, okay, so now we know that this is uh, something that is uh, a narrative. It's a story, isn't it? I had a gaping hole in one of my molars, one of these uh, teeth right here. One, there are different kinds of teeth that humans have. This is one of them, molars, found usually at the back of your mouth. The consequence of consuming, ooh. Okay, I wrote here, notice causes and effects. Okay, so this is the effect, right? Having, having a gaping hole, a large hole in one of his molars. The consequence of, okay, what caused it? Consuming excessive amounts of cakes and sweets. Eating too much cakes and sweets. And, hang on, that's another cause. And not practicing good dental hygiene. So, two reasons okay, that produce this effect. Brushing my teeth was often done within minutes. So, this is an explanation for what, the, what he meant by bad dental hygiene. He brushed his teeth too quickly not doing a good job at removing uh, particles. Next, unable to afford any expensive treatments, my mother tried all kinds of useless cures, remedies, to ease my suffering. One of those was to stuff a small piece of cotton wool moistened with some medicated oil into the cavity on the tooth. Ew, imagine, medicated oil, they usually smell so strong. I don't think you're supposed to put them in your mouth though, but I guess because they couldn't afford Expensive treatments, the mother just tried something like that. It would temporarily numb the pain. Hang on, what is the it referring to? What would numb the pain? It refers to the and applying, applying uh, a small piece of cotton wool with medicated oil into the cavity. Right? It would numb the pain for a short while, temporarily. But the decay and the suffering would continue. So is it problem solved? Nope. Next paragraph, in the end, my mother had no choice but to take me to a quack scientist. Uh, is this a duck scientist? No. Okay, quack just means fake, not skilled, but still doing dentistry. So probably this was a, was a, was a poor village or something like that. Yeah? Next, operating in one of the shop houses near our home. Uh, by the way, uh, look out. If you dare, go to Google and search for images. Uh, dentist India and... 
street dentist in India and uh, you'll enjoy what you see. As far as I could recollect, there were only a few certified dentists then, so definitely not a wealthy country. Yeah? In any case, we could not afford their treatment. So even if there were certified dent dentists, they couldn't afford it. So that's why they are seeing a quack dentist. Entering the clinic, we saw a few other patients waiting. All of a sudden, we heard high-pitched drilling sounds coming from the dental room. That was enough to make me go down on my knees and beg my mother to go home. So what is the that referring to? Hearing the, the sound of the high-pitched drilling. Who wants to have a drill in their mouth? My gosh. Okay, next. I promised her that I would not eat any more sweets. Is that the solution though? Not really, right? Unfortunately, my mother had a heart of stone. Ah, so her heart turned into stone? No. What does this mean then? Her heart, he had a, she had a heart of stone. Basically, she didn't care. She ignored the author. In other words, the author had to go through the treatment no matter how hard the author begged. By the way, do we know whether the author is male or female yet? I have no idea yet. Okay, soon my name was called. I dragged my feet into the room. So what does this tell me? Dragged my feet into the room. Were, were the feet very heavy? No. <laughs> Okay, and this is to show us that the author was not willing to go there. Okay, it was sparsely furnished. In other words, was there a lot of furniture in there? Was there a lot of furniture? Nope. Okay, very small amount. Don't forget, this is a quack site dentist in a poor village, so probably not going to have a lot of money for furniture. Yeah, with a dental chair and bottles of anesthetic lining the shelf. So, anesthetic is basically chemicals that stop you from feeling pain for a while. Yeah, they numb your body for a bit. The pungent, the very strong smell from a from antibacterial soap wafted into my nose. A stern-looking nurse, okay, not very nice looking. By the way, hmm, okay, let's read first. A stern-looking nurse ordered me to sit on the dental chair. After a casual glance at the cavity, the dentist was all set to do the job. Hang on. After a casual glance, uh, do you think the dentist was uh, very interested in doing a meticulous job? Not really. Casual tells us that it was just very quick. Just taking a quick look and say, okay, let's do this. So did the dentist bother to find out specifically what's wrong? No, just took a quick look and say, okay, I'm going to remove the tooth. The tools lined up beside the dental chair looked intimidating, looked very scary. My worst nightmare was about to begin. <laughs> To start with, the, the dentist applied some anesthetic gel, so some numbing gel, on my gum. With my mouth wide open, he began to screen the area around the decayed tooth. So take a look at the area around the decayed tooth. The nurse placed a long pair of pliers into his outstretched hand. He, I almost passed out at the sight of it, almost collapsed and fainted. Then gripping the instruments, referring to the pliers, he began to pull, he began to yank it out forcefully. Oh my gosh, that must have been... Horrible. Now, don't forget, he was given anesthetic gel. So that's why the author was not screaming, <laughs> okay? But you could, he could feel the force. For some strange reason, my tooth seemed to have a mind of its own and refused to budge, refused to move. He tried again and again without success. My gosh, okay. So <sighs> that's a horrible experience because it's not over yet. The dentist seemed frustrated, if not disgusted. So, both frustrated and disgusted. Then, he did the most unimaginable thing. Whoa, something's going to get worse. He proceeded to break the molar into pieces with a sharp-looking chisel, sending chills down my spine. So, there's a tool called a chisel. Yeah? And I screamed and started kicking the air wildly. So, it's very probably very violent. But thankfully, there was the anesthetic. Okay? My mother pleaded with him to stop, but he took no heed. Oh my goodness, the dentist ignored the customer. Even the mother, who was cold-hearted and insisted on the treatment, was begging the dentist to stop. He even brushed her aside. He even pushed the customer's mom aside. The deeper he went, the louder I screamed. When the dentist felt that he had most of the root of the stubborn tooth removed, hang on, hang on, is it all? No, most of. <laughs> so maybe there was still part of the rotten tooth in there. Yeah, He announced triumphantly, so victoriously. It's all done. My mother nearly fainted when he, she saw that my cheek had swollen like a pomelo. 
So because of all the violent action there, there was a bit of swelling. Now a pomelo, obviously, I don't think the cheek swa was swollen to this size. Pomelos are huge, okay? But uh, a pomelo is uh, basically a citrus fruit. Looks like a giant orange. But obviously not orange at all. Yeah. Next, relief washed over me as I slowly made my way to the waiting room, which was by then empty, <laughs> except for the two nurses behind the counter. Hang on. Uh, when he first went there, what was the situation like at the clinic? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, let's see what happened. Part of, oh, oh, sorry. A few other patients were waiting there. A few other patients were waiting there. But my goodness, after the screaming, <laughs> there were the place was empty. <laughs> Except for the two nurses behind the counter. I was not at all surprised that not a patient was in sight. Much to my annoyance, by the way, what is this try trying to tell you indirectly? The patients left the clinic because they were afraid. Much to my annoyance, my mother had to pay for the pain and suffering I had gone through. The shattering experience with an unqualified dentist gave me a phobia of all dentists. So a phobia is an unreasonable fear. Okay. Now, if you're afraid of um, a poisonous uh, did I just say poison? A venomous snake. Is that a phobia? Not really. You should be afraid of venomous snakes. Okay? But a phobia is where you are scared of numbers or you have a you are afraid of Wednesdays. Yeah? You're like, what? Why are you afraid of Wednesdays? So that would be a phobia, right? Because it's unreasonable. Next. Gave me a phobia of all dentists, but this changed when I had the good fortune to be in the care of numerous very good science dentists in the later part of my life. So the childhood memory here gave him a bad impression of all dentists. But later on, the experiences were much better. Adapted from Wee Kim Wee glimpses and reflections. I'm going to assume Wee Kim Wee is uh, a man. So this was the author was a boy. Uh, if you search Wee Kim Wee, you'll find something about the history of Singapore. So anyway, we're going to assume the author is male here. Number one, one reason why the writer had a decayed tooth. Okay, so first thing you should notice is that this is a one mark question. Yeah, so one reason, one mark. Why decayed tooth? Usually the first question means we have to look at the first paragraph. Okay, now if you rem remember, we were looking at a lot of causes and effects here, right? So why decayed tooth? So the consequence of consuming too much, he consumed excessive amounts of cakes and sweets. Next, he did not practice good dental hygiene. Now, should you say he only brushed his teeth within minutes? No, all right, that's the explanation for this part here. He did not practice good dental hygiene. All right. So yeah, as a habit, he consumed too many sweets and cakes and he did not practice good dental hygiene. Now, either one will get you that one mark there. 72. Why did the writer's mother finally take the writer to the dentist? Two marks. Okay. Make sure that you have two points. All right. So why finally? At first they didn't, right? The mother just used these uh, many useless remedies. One of them was to use this here. Okay, but finally they went. Why? If you look, this is a, is this a direct question? But a level 2 direct question maybe. If you look here, is there a reason why they didn't stop here? Just put the medicated oil and be done. Why go to the dentist in the end? Because of this, it would only temporarily numb the pain. That's one point. What does that mean? In the end, he had to go to the dentist because the solution lasted only for a short period of time. It was temporary. Where's the second mark coming from? The decay and the suffering continued. That's why. Okay. So in the end, my mother had no choice. That tells me the answer is right before this, which is number one. The numbing of the pain was only temporary. The decay and the suffering continued. So my answer was, okay, her remedies, her cures were only 
only temporarily numb the pain. Notice that everything here is taken from the text. Her remedies only temporarily numbed the pain. But the writer's tooth decay and suffering continued. Well, let me change this. I don't want to use the word but over here. Okay. It was temporary and the writer's tooth decay and suffering continued. Ooh, let's remove this. Oh my goodness. That's it. Fill in the table by identifying the correct words from the passage. Which two words tell us that the writer's mother's treatment was ineffective and they are both in separate sentences. Okay, so uh, first paragraph, mother's treatment ineffective. Let's take a look. First paragraph, mother's treatment ineffective. Well, uh, you see the word useless? The treatments were ineffective. Okay, now mm, what about temporarily? It would temporarily numb the pain. So if something is temporarily, is it effective? No, because after a while, it goes away. The effect goes away. So it's not effective at all. It, the effects last only for a short while. So let me see. Are they from separate sentences? Absolutely. Okay. So they tell us, number one, useless and temporarily what do the words refer to the word refers to okay what does it refer to line six usually you have to refer earlier part to earlier parts yeah it would temporarily numb the pain what is the it referring to what is numbing the pain here it would temporarily numb the pain some of you might just write cotton wool with medicated oil and a, a nice teacher would give you the mark but if I put the cotton wool with medicated oil on the table, is it going to numb the pain? No. If I put it on your chair, is it going to numb the pain? No. So for me, I'm not, I'm not going to just mention cotton wool with medicated oil. What was temporarily numbing the pain? Okay, It was stuffing the tooth cavity with a small piece of cotton wool with medicated oil. It was the application of this to the tooth cavity that temporarily numbed the pain. Next, what does that mean? Refer to number tw line 12. Well, okay, that was enough to make me go down on my knees. So read before that. What was making the author begging beg the mother to go home? It was the sound of the high pitched drilling, right? Coming from the dental room. So it refers to the high pitched drilling sounds coming out of the dental room. Uh, line 19, the dentist was ready to do the job. What job? Okay, so the dentist was all set to do the job. Uh, it refers to being a dentist. Eh, wrong. Okay, so after taking a look at the cavity, the dentist was all set to do the job. Now, how do you know what the job is? Look at the end when he said, yay, it's all done. Okay, so what was done here? It was the removal of the rotten tooth, isn't it? It's the removal of the decayed tooth. Don't just say the job refers to being a dentist. No, no, no. Remember, at what, 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 how did the story end? Okay, it, the, the, the time at the operating theater ended with the dentist saying, it's all done. And then you read what happens. Okay, it's removal of the decayed tooth. True or false? The writer's mother was adamant. Okay, if you do not know the meaning of adamant, you're going to struggle a lot with answering this question. So, to be adamant is to be insistent on something. Very, very strongly saying, yeah, it has to be done my way. Okay. So, the writer's mother was insistent that the writer received that treatment. Oh, isn't this the part? Okay, from paragraphs 2 and 3. So, from paragraphs 1, 2 and 3. The writer was insistent. Absolutely. How do we know? Because the, the author begged the mother to go home. Now, a bad answer would be the mother had a heart of stone. That's a lousy answer. Okay? When you're answering comprehension questions, you're supposed to answer in simple, direct language. Don't just say heart of stone. Did she actually have a heart of stone? No. So, a good answer would be she did not allow the writer to go home, even though he begged to do so 
and promise to stop eating sweets. Actually, let me change my answer. Uh, go home can mean anything, right? Uh, what do you mean by go home, right? To leave the clinic. So a better answer would be to just say he did not allow, allow the writer to leave the clinic. That's better. Go home from where? School, <laughs> right? Did not allow the writer to leave the clinic. Next. The dentist removed the writer's tooth with a long pair of pliers. Absolutely wrong. The long pair of pliers was used at first and he was unsuccessful, right? After that, then he used the chisel. Okay? So, how do you prove that that is false? Number one, the tooth refused to budge when the dentist used the pliers. So, this tells me that he did not remove the tooth with the pliers because when he used the pliers, the tooth refused to budge. Another way to prove this is that he removed the tooth with a sharp looking chisel. Question 76, which two actions show that he was not skillful in paragraph 3? So I'm looking for paragraph 3 and I'm looking for actions. Let's take a look. Now surely we have to look for the dentist and actions taken by the dentist. Yeah. So casual glance, the dentist was all set. So we are looking at casual glance. And next, let's look for another action by the dentist, shall we? Uh, the dentist applied, hey, that's another action, applied some gel. Now, does that tell me he's not good at his job? Applied gel? No. All right, he began to screen the area. He began to check the area. Okay, that's another action by the dentist. But does this tell me he's bad at his job? No, screening the area is something you should do as a dentist. You should study the area. Next. Gripping the instrument. Okay, another action. Means he's not good at his job? Nah. He began to yank it out forcefully. Hang on. This is his, one of his actions as well. Does, he tell, does this tell me he's not good at his job? Yeah. As a dentist, your job is not to pull at the tooth. You might damage other things there, right? And you're going to cause a lot of discomfort to your patient. So this tells me that he's not very good at his job. And that's the end of paragraph 2, actually. Basically, the action here is he took only a casual glance at the writer's cavity. As a good dentist, should you just look, take a quick look before starting your operation? No, you should study closely before you begin. Next one, he failed to remove the tooth even after yanking it forcefully. So that tells me he was not skillful. Choose words from P3 and 4 which have the same meanings as the words below. Okay, para 3 and 4. Terrifying. I think the word that means uh, terrifying is intimidating. The dental chair so it looks like that is the answer for terrifying intimidating next one victoriously ah i know victorious means to win something yes now where's the part where somebody so-called won something it's right here triumphantly when the dentist managed to successfully remove most of the stubborn tooth with the chisel my goodness okay but victoriously means triumphantly deserted now it's not deserted, okay? It's not where camels live. So deserted means basically like to be without any humans, right? Empty. So which word here? It's when when did when did when did the word empty get used? Right? Right there to describe the clinic after all the patients left. Yeah. So the word deserted okay, can be replaced with empty. 78. What was the cheek compared to? A pomelo. That's easy. How the writer felt. I want a feeling. So when the extraction was over, if you take a look at the text, when the extraction was over, uh, relief washed over me. Can you see this? Relief washed over me. That's when the tooth was removed, right? So how was the writer feeling? How the writer felt? Okay, The writer felt relieved. Now, another way of writing is he was relieved. But that's not a good thing because just give me the feeling. What's the feeling? It's the noun form, isn't it? It's relief with the F. Next, displeased. Well, the word, the key word is annoyance. If you look at the text, you will realize that there's, there isn't displeased, is there? Can you see the word displeased? Not really. So here you require it requires a bit of vocabulary. You know that displeased means being upset, right? Can you see the word annoyance here? So this tells me I need to focus around here. Okay, what was annoying and causing displeasure to the writer? His mother had to pay for the pain and suffering he had gone through. And that's it. That's the reason. So the mother had to pay for the painful operation. Now, notice that I'm not copying exactly. 
I like to basically think, okay, what is it telling me? Now, if you copy that, it's fine, but I just had I just wrote it in a different way. The mother had to pay for the painful operation. Question 80, there's a yes, no part to the first question. Uh, did the writer's feeling towards dentists change? So please do not write yes, full stop, no, full stop. Okay, Start with yes, comma, it did. Or no, comma, it did not. Please don't ever, ever use contractions in your comprehension answers. Okay, wrong, wrong, wrong. So yes, it did. No, it did not. In this case, yes, it did. How do we know? He was lucky to be in the care of numerous very good dentists later in life. Where did I get that from? So, if you read carefully, right? So, but this changed. See, it did change. I had the good fortune. Now, if you wrote good fortune, no problem. He had the good fortune of being in the care of numerous very good dentists in the later part of his life. That is the last question to this test paper. Hopefully, you did well. And... Have a good day.